Good morning, first grade, are you here? Well, I've moved locations and I've got my old blackboard out. I need to erase this from last semester. Switch to an outdoor space where the light is a little nicer. And I can have a little bit better background, I think. I'm not sure it's much better. I really prefer the classroom, but we'll get there uh, later on this week. At least I will. <laughs> Let's try again. Good morning, first grade, are you here? You already probably said it, but yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. All right, think of the sun coming up in the morning when you first see the pink light of the day. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Love. Always send out love the best we can, right? That's always the most important thing sometimes we feel, isn't it? All the great teachers of the world have said, yeah, it all comes down to love. So sending out love in all its different kinds of forms that we can send it in. Um, I have a song for us, a different song. It goes like this. It's a song about frogs in the spring. Now, some places... Uh, the frogs hibernate all winter. They go into the mud and they barely breathe and they almost freeze. Their whole body actually, it's like a superpower. They can like be in a, in a freezer um, for months and months without any even like seeming to have any air or anything. They can burrow down in the mud and they just sit there and they pretty much almost freeze. Some of them actually do kind of freeze. Their, their body temperature gets that low. Definitely a superpower. Um, and then in the spring, the things thaw and they come out and they're, they're very happy that it's spring. And everyone's happy that it's spring uh, after a long winter um, in places where it gets really cold. And, uh, and then one of the things that makes spring, uh, makes it sound like spring is certain birds come back and the frogs start, start singing. So this one, this song is about frogs singing in the springtime. It goes like this. Rejoice, rejoice to welcome spring. Down in every pond the froggies sing. The peepers chime their clarion notes. Peeper, peeper, peep. Peeper, peeper, peep. The wood frogs clear their throbbing throats. Creeper, creeper, creep. Creeper, creeper, creep. Plunka, plunka, plunk. The green frog strums and the big bass bullfrog chug a chug a rum. I like that song. It's funny. It's hard to sing it that high and low, though. Um, especially the chugger chugger rum with those bullfrogs. Bullfrogs look kind of like our bufo frog, those big frogs that we have here in Hawaii. All right. Uh, oh, Auntie Jackie is should be logging on any moment. Yeah, well, a couple more minutes, actually, it looks like. So, um, so uh, we'll do the day and the date. The day and the date. The day and the date. Yes, today is. What is today? Let's see. Yesterday was a school day. Oh no, yesterday was a weekend. No, no, yesterday was, yeah, yesterday was a weekend. I've mixed them all up. Can't even keep track anymore. The day, the weekends and the weekdays, they almost all seem the same, don't they? Especially with not going to school on the weekdays. But to, yesterday was Sunday, so Sunday, mm, today is the day after Sunday, which is mm, Monday. Mm, ma o n and d a y spells day d a y spells day and what do i put right here a dot with a tail called a comma and then the month that's the day there's the month jan u airy the first month of the year and this is already the 11th day of January, and it actually is day number 72 of school. If you can even 
call it that. It's the 72nd day, 72nd day of, this means number, uh, number 72, the 72nd day of the school year in first grade. Hard to believe. And if we count them up by fives, it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I think I'll go back up here. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Am I counting too fast? 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. <clears throat> 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. <clears throat> and two more. 72. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 71, 72. 72 days. We could count these by tens too, because this, each one of these is a group of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72. 72 days of school, and that's how I write it. Seven, seven groups of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups of ten. And two more little ones right there. 72nd day of school. And today is, of course, the year is 2021 because we had Happy New Year <laughs> uh, January 1st, and that's 11 days ago. I think I forgot my comma over here. And I usually put the TH because it's the 11th. Bite your tongue. Today is Monday, January 11th, 2021, the 72nd day of the school year of first grade. So that's that. <clears throat> um, Jackie should be here any minute. Yeah, she's probably logging on. I will just tell you that um, today is Monday again. And we'll say the days of the week real quick while I'm doing this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then back to Monday. And the months of the year, I'll say all 12 of them. You say the first three, January, February, March. Ready? January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August, September, October, November, December. I'm in trouble with this. Come on now. And, uh, well, let's see. While well, I try to puzzle this out, for Auntie Jackie coming on. Um, the movement I was going to do is the sailor went to sea. I don't remember if you remember that that hand clapping game. You probably do. I'll just say it without clapping it while I'm doing this. It goes like, the sailor went to sea, 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 to see what he could see. Call her she. See what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. The sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. All right, Auntie Jackie's here. Remember that one, Auntie Jackie? All right, well, Abriel has logged on to this and I have a feeling that my audio is messed up again here because I've got a speaker downstairs and I will run down and grab that speaker maybe you could show this I to can you. Hear oh I can hear you yeah it was a button good morning Mr. Coulter good morning Auntie Jackie I am in the garden 
and I'm ready to go. Go ahead. You can go ahead. Abrielle, it looks like uh, one of our students has logged in to the Zoom uh -huh. call here, and uh, okay. so I don't know if, if he will show up on the Zoom or whether he's watching on the YouTube or what exactly is going on there, but I let him in, I think, so that might I happen. See. I see him. Okay. Or I see his name. Good. Well, uh, I'm out in my garden, and I'm doing a quiet spot, so I wanted to show you guys my garden and join. have you join me on my quiet spot. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, but here's my camera, and I'm going to zoom. I'm going to show you around the camera a little. Does this look like something you guys know? So what do you recognize that you see that you see in my garden on the screen, but we, you know in your own garden? Okay, does anybody recognize the big, big, biggest leaf of this banana here? These are big leaves. Look my hand against the leaf big leaf does anybody have that in your yard okay i'm in my quiet spot right now it's nice to do it in the morning does anybody have rocks in your yard i have some big rocks here but if you keep looking at this you will see i have so many leaves in my garden and some of them just do it all by themselves and some of them are right here that i planted does anybody see? What is the smallest leaf that you can see? You seeing something really tiny? Look at that one. Oh, I recognize this one. Does anyone recognize that tiny little seedling? That is a small seedling, brand new. Oh, there's a small one too. Does anybody see any insects in my quiet spot? I haven't seen them yet. They may have heard me coming and left. So I'm quiet. I see some. Does anybody see some leaves that are getting all brown on the edges? Yeah. I haven't answered any questions, have I? I'm just asking you guys all these questions. Does anyone recognize this plant? It gets all brown at this time of the year. Okay, I'm not going to answer you, but I'm going to show you something. Okay. This plant attached to these roots. These are rhizome roots. If we dig even more, you would see all these roots. And if I break the root, because I love investigating, oh, look how orange that is. What would you do if you had this root in your hand right now? Would you smell it? I might smell it. Or you want to look even closer? This root is this this belongs to this plant, and this is a turmeric. Olena is the Hawaiian word. So this is what I do in my quiet spot. I just explore. Just get a little explore, and I get interested in something like this. Now, any, this plant, this is a plant that it got popular. People know it's nutritious. This plant is a favorite of one of our white moth caterpillars and she will fly in here and lay an egg and when the leg hatches the egg hatches what do you think is this is can you see this little green line can you see the holes in the leaf the holes brought me closer what do you see that's a worm that worm is eating my kale plant i'm gonna pinch it get it off of there okay. excuse me worm so here, what I, it's in my hand now. This worm can eat a lot in one day. This worm is making a lot of holes in my leaf. It's wiggling around, it doesn't want to be in my hand. I'm gonna check for more worms in here because I would rather eat this kale than this worm. Thank you, wormy. See you later. I'm gonna toss it far away. Does anyone recognize that big tree and what's in it? So these are all the things that I like to do in my garden, and it really teaches me. I don't really have to do very much. I just look and listen. This one, mm -mm, I'm going to make me a salad with this one. And this one, can you tell they're brand new in the ground? I just put them in the ground after we talked on Friday, and I showed you my little plants. These are very small. They're the lettuces. Yeah. And I put this all this compost in that I showed you on Friday too, and I'm looking 
Add it in the soil and it looks good. As you can see an eggshell in there, yeah. So I'm gonna invite you guys to consider a little quiet spot of your own so that you can learn some things or just have some questions. Oh, look at that. What does that look like? Looks like a nice squash happening in my garden. There's another one. And the sunlight and the birds and the crickets and my avocados. So I invite you to go out to your own quiet spot after Mr. Coulter's lesson is finished and hang around. You just sit still or you can move around because when we come back to the school garden, that's what everybody has to do when you come to the garden. You just go right in, explore and look. And then you can share it with somebody in your house. Someone come back in the house and say, hey, I saw this thing. Do you want to come look? Or you can just use all of the words that you have and say, I saw this thing and I'm going to describe it to you. So right now, I'm going to finish up by using some describing words. And you can do it right at your house. I see dark green. I see new baby plants. I see yellow leaves. I saw bright orange roots. I see pumpkin. I see pineapple. Big leaves. Little leaves. Dead leaves. Squawky birds. What do you see? <laughs> you getting some words in your mind now too? Hey, what's up in that tree? Can you see that? hard to see them. That is the last thing, and you guys can name it with all your names or your colors or your sizes. Can you see them? It's hard to see them. They're oranges. All right, you guys, thanks for having me, Mr. Coulter. Thank you for being such good students. Aloha. Till tomorrow. All righty. Thank you, Auntie Jackie. Third grade. Mr. Coulter, really enjoy that our student is on the Zoom with us because I feel like we have a student when it's so distance it's hard to tell so thank you for being there yeah that was great I wish uh, I wish I had two computers I could have a zoom going at the same time as this thing that I've got going here maybe we'll work that out someday hi Abrielle hi there he is good to see you all right uh, I'm gonna end the call and I'll be back on YouTube right now see you guys later All right, so we were going to do Sailor Went to Sea, and since Eamon has showed up here, <clears throat> I will reteach it to, to him and to you at the same time. Maybe you should stand up, though, because you're already kind of smaller than me. Okay, clap your hands on, on your knees. The sailor, again, went to sea, 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 to see what he, she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, see, see Was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see All right, and that's a funny one. See, I can see what I can see with my eyes, but I went to the sea and sailed upon the sea. Now it's spelled differently. I could spell it in capital letters, I see what I see with my eyes, and you can't see what I wrote, though. And if I go out to the sea and fi go fishing, I spell it with an S-E-A at the end for some no reason. Actually, there's a rule about this. Maybe you know this rule. When two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. You do know that one. Very good. So we say E, C, E, E. All right. And the next thing I was going to do is <clears throat> do a little review of Drippy the Water Droplet. And maybe I'll draw just a little sketch. This isn't really a main lesson drawing, but I'm just going to draw a little sketch <clears throat> while I tell the story, retell the story. Here's a couple different colors here. I'll do the trick. Green for the ocean. All right, so Drippy the Water Droplet was born in a beautiful big cloud up in the sky. Up in the sky. There's a beautiful blue sky 
with a big, beautiful white cloud. And the white cloud became more and more crowded in a good way. Full, 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 full to bursting with Drippy and all of her many little friends. Drippy's friends and cousins and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and siblings of all sorts. And she found herself growing one day, growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And one day, she began to fall. And she saw that all of her friends were also falling. All of her siblings were also falling, 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 falling. They did not know where they were going. But they saw the beautiful green earth down below. If you want to draw this, you can, of course. Saw the beautiful green earth down below with all the grasses and trees. Trees of various sorts. Growing down below. And as she fell, she did not know where she was going, but she could, she could see she was going toward the earth, and it seemed like a good place to go. Everyone seemed happy to see her and her friends. And as she fell farther and farther and farther down, she finally found herself on the ground, right there. And bunch of her siblings started showing up too, and they all showed up together and became, I think I'll switch colors to blue, a puddle. And the puddle reflected the beautiful blue sky like a mirror. And so the puddle grew bigger and bigger and bigger, and then the puddle began to travel. She's going somewhere again. She was just getting used to her little new home where she had left her home up in the sky, and she was just figuring out what it was like to be in a puddle, and then the puddle started moving. The puddle started moving and went a little faster and faster and became a rivulet, and the rivulet joined a stream, and the stream got bigger and bigger and bigger and then joined a river, and the river got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and wider and wider and wider and finally reached finally reached the ocean. And Drippy found herself in the beautiful, wide ocean with all the coral and the fish and so many creatures full of life and immense, vast, huge, gigantic, ginormous, incredibly big, deep, and wide ocean. Well, <clears throat> she was just so happy to be there. She had never dreamed that there could be so much water, so many just like her. And one day, a little later, she found something interesting happening. Yet again, another change. She began to feel herself. It was a hot day, very warm, still day out there. And she, there she was on the top of the ocean with all her other friends and relations. And she found herself feeling lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And as she became lighter, she felt her body changing again was changing again. She and all her friends were not even visible to the humans. They could kind of feel the water in the air. But as Drippy became lighter and lighter, she and her friends floated. They became, they flew. Talk about a superpower. She was floating and she was invisible to the humans. They could only feel the moisture in their skin. 
and she and all her friends went floating higher and higher past all the green trees, past all the people and flowers that have been so happy to get some quenching of their thirst, floating higher and higher and higher, and guess where she ended up floating in the beautiful sky, forming with all her sisters another big beautiful cloud. So that's the story of Drippy the Water Droplet. And the scientific way of saying it is the water cycle. Round and it's kind of like a circle almost. All right, so that's that. And I, I wanted to show you some water here in this flowers. And here I have some flowers and some water in a cup of water. And I don't know if you can how well you can see that cup of water, but there it is. And I have another cup over here. I don't know if you can tell, but this cup of water is full almost to the very top. Yeah, you can see that, I think. Almost to the very top. And then I have another cup right here, a taller cup. <clears throat> it's also wider at the top than this one, isn't it? This one has kind of a squarish shape. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it has a little square shape. It's like a jar with a handle on it for drinking. And this one is round and has some designs in it. And I thought it was interesting to take note. I'm going to move these flowers over to this one because I'd like to do an experiment. I'm wondering if, uh, if I pour this water into this cup, you know, will it come up to about there or somewhere different? And uh, you might be able to guess, you might be able to guess that I have, a, it's a little bit surprising. So this is shorter, the mouth is not as wide. <clears throat> this one is taller with a wider mouth. This one looks bigger, but you pour it in, watch what happens. It fills it up to the very top, just about exactly full. This one was just about full, and this one is also just about full. Unbelievable, huh? This is, this size is actually, in third grade we learn how to call it, what size it is, we call it a pint, and, and then we also, another way of saying how many ounces it is, it's 16 ounces, but that's a, a lesson for another day. So that's that. I'm going to put my water and my flowers back into this one. So I like a little bit less of a wide mouth for my flowers. And if I can pour this, it's kind of tricky to pour, especially with my left hand. Okay, there we go. All the way to the top. It doesn't overflow. Funny, huh? All right, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was I wanted you, and since Eamon is here, he can help me, I wanted to have you guess a number. So if I have a number in my head, <clears throat> I wonder how many guesses it will take for you to guess it. So I'm going to put a number down, and I'm going to, in fact, I think what I'll do is I will write the number somewhere where you can't see it. Now you face that way, and I'll write the number back here. Okay, so, oh, but then you might be able to see it. If I put it over, if I put it over here, no, you still can't see it. All right, I will write it in some chalk. Down there. Well, but then, oh, that's true. You can do it down there. Okay, so you, so you don't look down here. All right, down there. Okay, you ready? I'll put it under right here. Okay, I don't think you can see it, can you? No. All right, so... Why'd you look at it? You're not supposed to look at it. <laughs> Try again. With a different number. Now don't look at it, because you're going to get me the guesser. OK. So now, you guess the number. And I'll keep track of how many guesses it takes for you to guess it. Six. You can guess a six. And I get to tell you whether it's higher or lower. OK? Here's your first guess. Six. It's, it's higher. Seven. Seven? Higher. Eight? 
Three guesses, still higher. Ten. That's four guesses, lower. Nine. Nine. Five guesses it took, and you can see down there I wrote the number nine. You can see some of the kids maybe want to see it too. And there's a number nine down there at the bottom. All right. Want to try again? Sure. Okay. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm wondering if Eamon can figure out the smartest way to figure out what the number is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where do you start? And maybe here it's higher or lower. Do you go all the way down to the bottom to one, or do you go somewhere else? Okay, so you look forward. I'll put another number here. Okay, you guess. Five. Lower. Three. Higher. Four. Correct. It took you only two. It took you only three guesses. There's a four down there at the bottom. So I think that what Eamon did, and I think if you're guessing a number from one to ten, why did you choose five first? Because, because then it, it's equal either way. It's right in the middle. So you, you're going to split it right away and you're going to narrow it down. It's either going to be six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, or it's going to be four, three, two, or one. You only have four possibilities if you guess right in the middle to begin with. That's exactly what I was hoping you and the others would realize. All right. Now, um, I want to talk about this game called Mancala. And this game right here is a really old game played from ancient times all over the world, especially in Africa and the Middle East and ancient Persia and places like that. So this game, Eamon, you could play with me, okay? Yeah. So this game, I think I'm going to, I wonder if this was lower, if that would help. Further away. Um, kind of hard to see in the sunshine. Let's move it all closer in. Okay. Computer's in the sunshine, too, which is probably not very happy about. All right. So this game is called Mancala. And I'm glad Eamon is here. I didn't really plan it this way. But Eamon's here so we could learn how to play this. So this game, there's a few different ways to play. Of course, ancient games from all over the different places in the world, there's different, slightly different rules. So this is my side, and that's his side. And the way that you play is you pick up pieces and you drop them along in the way. And, and you have one pot. This is my pot over here. So this is my side. And even though we're going clockwise around this way, this is the closest one to me, but I got to get all the way back over to here to put some in my pot. And I, get, I win if I get the most in my pot and more than he gets in his pot. And I don't know if you noticed this, but how many, Eamon, how many, how many holes are there? Well, there's six on each side. Six on each side. and. Two sixes makes, how much is it all together? You can just count them. Uh, okay. Twelve. Twelve. Two sixes make twelve. And you probably knew that, but you didn't want to say it and get it wrong by chance, right? So, um, where am I? Where are you? No one can see you either. Here, there we go. All right, so... Um, so if Eamon was to go first, why don't you go ahead, Eamon, and he can start, he can start, pick up, on the beginning of your turn, you can pick up any that are on your side. So he can pick up any that are on his side, he's going to drop one, 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 and then pick up wherever he goes. So he picks up, he skips my pot, he drops one, two, three, four, and then picks up those. And then he keeps on going, one, two, and he drops in his pot, keep on going, and he picks up again. So this game, this first turn sometimes takes quite a while. You'll see he goes around and he drops, skipping my pot. Wherever he ends, whoops, you missed one there. Wherever he ends, he picks them up and drops them one at a time into the next pot. And if he ends in his pot, he gets to go again. He can choose any on his side to start with. Only two left there. 
Okay. And when he ends in an empty spot, if he ends on an empty spot, then his turn is over. But as long as he ends where there's some, some counters, he gets to keep going. This might take a while. Yeah, it does take, the first turn takes a while. And eventually though, he'll end up ending Oh look, he's already got four in his pot and I've got none. There is one other way to get um, counters in your pot and I'll tell you that when we get when we get to a place when that's gonna happen. Sometimes these start to almost overflow. This game's called Mantala. And this is one of my favorite games to teach first graders along with tic-tac-toe. Oh, he ended. Now he ended on his side in an empty pot, so his turn is over, but he gets to take this one, since it's on his side, and the ones across from it, and put all those in his pot. So I've already got several empty places along my, along my board, uh, so I'm gonna just go ahead and start right here, and take this one and plop it right there, and I get to pick those up, and I skip his pot, go around, and you can make one of these with uh, an egg carton, this is this is the number 12, of course, just like eggs come in a dozen eggs, which means 12 eggs. Skip his pot, drop, 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 all the way around, and I end in my pot. Oh, that's great, I get to go again. So then um, I can keep on going, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take well, I'm gonna keep going, I guess. Take those two, drop them there, skip his pot, go one, two. Oh, that one's getting very full. Hopefully I'll land across from it in that empty spot. Oh, I didn't, I ended in, oh no, this was my pot. I was supposed to end in my pot, because I, so I go in here and then I accidentally put there, but I'm supposed to go here. That's my pot, so I get to get, go again. So th now I've got a good opportunity. I've got one guy right here, I'm gonna drop it right there, end my turn, and I get to steal all those guys because I end on my side, on my side and an empty. If it happens on his side, it doesn't, get, doesn't count. But if I land on my side and an empty, I get to take this guy and all the ones across from it and put it in my pot. As you can see, I've already gotten, even though my turn was very short, I already got more counters in my pot than he does. We used to play this a lot. Around and round he goes, dropping in each one. He picks them up wherever he ends, as long as there is one there. Oh, he ended to his side. He gets to take his plus the two that were across from it. And the game is over when you when you empty all of your all the counters are gone. And if you empty your side first, you get to steal everything that's on the other side. But it takes a while to empty it. So I think if I go here, I just go one, two. The one, I'd have two guys there and I'd end my turn. And that's not a very good way to end my turn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up these guys instead. I wouldn't get any points at all. One, I'm just gonna hope. I can't really tell. Okay, there's three. One, two, three. Pick up this group. Drop in my pot. One, two, three four, five, six. I ended on my side. There's only one over there, but at least I get to take it and this guy, and it's his turn. He's going to go with his big pot there at the end. Sometimes it's good not to leave a big pot on your side because then the other person might get to steal it. Oh, you ended on my side, an empty pot turns over. You don't get anything extra. All right, I guess I'll start here. Oops. One, two, oops, oh well. My turn's over. I ended on his side with a single with nothing else in it. So he's wondering, oh, if I count here, if I get that, one, two, three. It doesn't do him very much good. One, two, three. If you take this one, then you'll end up here, won't you? One, two. Oh, no, one, two. You wouldn't. But if you start with this one, you would. Oh, you're wrong about that. Oh, well. The other way to do it, of course, is you could take an end in your own pot. Oh, no, that's my pot. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Let's see. 
How about I'll go this way? Oh, I could just go like this. End my turn. Steal those four. I have trouble visualizing where my where I'm going to end up. As soon as I start having more than two or three going, I, I definitely can't plan that ahead very well. But it's fun to try. And on your side, all right. One, two, three. One, two, three. My turn's over. So, Mancala is not, not a great spectator sport. <laughs> not as fun to watch as some people playing soccer or whatever, but we're still, just want to teach you how to play. Your turn. I guess I should just try to get my pieces over onto his side best I can. Or just get pieces off the board in general, I guess. Uh-oh, looks like his next turn he's going to be able to get them off unless I put one. Oh, I can put one, so there we go. One, two, three, I end there. Oh, that was probably a bad idea. Now he can end. Now he wiped out his whole side, so he gets my last few counters. And then and then we count these up. I just I just count mine on my side, so I just go like this. If I put four in each, one, in each, in each uh, hole... Then I, and if I have any left over, then I know I won, because that's how the game starts. But I can just count them. It's easier just to count them. It makes the most sense to kids, I think. So I can count these by ones, or twos, or threes, or fours, or whatever I want to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I have 30, and we can already see that he doesn't have as many as me. He's got four in each of those pots and only two in this pot and none there. And I've got all my fours full and I've got some extras here. So then we set the game up to start again like that. So that's Mancala. And you can take marbles and an egg carton and play this yourself. You can look up the rules in the computer, of course. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, practice and learn and then when we come to school when I go to teach it to you at school again reteach it then you'll already pretty much know how to play or will have had some practice at least all right so um the last thing well it's 9 45 I think that's honestly about enough let's do one more thing though because we we talked about combinations of of different flavors of ice cream last week and I thought it would be fun to try five flavors because we did one, two, three, and four. I'll get my five flavors. I get the uh, orange for my cone. I get the mint flavor. I've got the red one for like the strawberry flavor. And a blue one, I don't know what blue. Blueberry, I guess. Blueberry. I guess the chocolate. There's four flavors. Vanilla. Okay, white for vanilla, great. Okay, so we have vanilla, Oh, that's my cone color. We have vanilla, we have mint, we have chocolate, we have blueberry, and strawberry. So, first of all, we can do two of each color, right? Can you see that? You can't even see that. What am I doing? We have strawberry, blueberry, chocolate, mint, and vanilla. And we could, first of all, we could do two, 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 and two. So. Two, 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 and two. So that would be two vanilla, two mint, two chocolate, two blueberry, 
two strawberry. Two of each. All right. I think I'm going to make some more cones here. Start with five more. So now I'm going to do vanilla, one vanilla with each of those kinds. So this is going to be vanilla and something, vanilla and something, vanilla and something, vanilla and something. And I already have two vanillas. So I need one, two, three, four. I only need four different cones for my vanilla combinations. So let's we'll start in the same order. I got vanilla mint. I got vanilla chocolate. I got vanilla blueberry. I got vanilla strawberry. Okay. I'm going to go to the next one over. I got mint. Well, I already have mint vanilla right there. So I'm going to go mint chocolate, mint blueberry, mint strawberry. That's only four kinds. So I already have one, two, three, four kinds there. So I'm going to go, each one of these is going to be mint with something, mint chocolate, mint blueberry, mint strawberry. So we got mint, what did I say? Chocolate, mint chocolate, mint blueberry, mint strawberry. Oops, there we go. Erase that one. All right, now I've got, I did my mints, now I'm doing my chocolate. So I need chocolate blueberry, chocolate strawberry. Chocolate blueberry, chocolate strawberry. Chocolate blueberry and chocolate strawberry. Hopefully you can see those colors pretty well. Um, you can see them better if I filled them in, but I was trying not to go to take too long on this. So I did my chocolate, blueberry, chocolate, strawberry. So now I need to do my blueberry. Blueberry, strawberry, right? Blueberry, strawberry. I don't think there's any more combinations because I, let's just check with the strawberry. Strawberry, I got strawberry blueberry right there. You're gonna fill in the cones for me. Strawberry blueberry right there. I go around and fill in all the blueberries, maybe everyone can see them better. But the the real the main thing I really want to show you and teach you here is how to do things one step at a time so that you make sure you get them all done. And that was rather complicated, I admit. Rather complicated. And there's lots of ways of doing it, but some of them, it's kind of, you get kind of confused unless you do it in a systematic way, like a way like from start to finish, one thing at a time to make sure that you get everything done properly. Kind of like sweeping a floor. You don't just sweep one crumb at a time. You don't just sweep one crumb at a time, willy-nilly, from wherever on the floor, you have to start on one side and make your way to the other side, right? That would be silly. But we'll double check these in a second here. So get a couple more chocolates to fill out. And now my vanillas. Oh, got them all. So we have, these are the flavors up here. We have two of this kind, two of that kind, two of this kind, two of that kind, and two of that kind. And then we do one at a time. This one was all of those four. And then this one with all of the four. But we already did, when we were doing vanilla, we already got vanilla mint. So we skip that one and we just go one, one, two, three different kinds. And then we did that over here. We had mint with chocolate, blueberry, strawberry. Mint with chocolate, blueberry, strawberry. That's done. And we get the chocolate. I feel like I missed one. Surely it seems like I missed one. We get the chocolate with blueberry and, yeah, blueberry and, and strawberry. That's right there. We don't need to go chocolate mint because we already did chocolate mint when we were doing the mint. Then we got the blueberry, last one, I guess. And if I look at the strawberry, do I have strawberry with each of, just double check, do I have strawberry with all the other flavors? Well, here's the strawberry, I have the double strawberry. Do I have strawberry blueberry? Yeah, do I have strawberry chocolate? Uh, strawberry, when I, yeah, right there. Do I have strawberry mint? Probably over here, strawberry mint. And do I have strawberry vanilla? Probably when I was doing the vanillas, strawberry vanilla. So I, I do have all of them. So the answer to how many combinations 
can I get with 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. 15 different combinations. If I have five exclamation point, five different kinds of ice cream, there's 15 different ways that I can combine them. So that's kind of a fun little mathy kind of project to do. I wonder how crazy it would get if we tried it with six. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much for being with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And I'll see you.